All right, what's up, guys? Doing good? Are, are you tired or something? Is that what it is? You're tired? Can't be tired. Can't, sorry. Sorry's not, sorry's not an option. It's not an answer. Okay, that's cool. I, I understand that. Then. That's cool. All right, guys. Um, Nate, you got my title picture, man, up there. I, there it is. Okay. Um, the, here's my title picture. I actually spent a, lo a lot of time on this one. Uh, I wasn't going to say that, but it is Allison. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what to say. You know, that, that pretty much explains it. But anyway, I, I, I kind of like that one. I, I did try to put some filters and stuff in Photoshop, try to make it not look as much like her, but, you know. It is, isn't it? I like that one. All right, I'm going to get started before I get off track. Okay, uh, I'm going to say a few things before I actually get started. Um, I guess I've actually already started, though. But uh, first of all, thanks for coming. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I invited, like, 15 friends. Three showed up. Thank you for the three. Give it up for the three. Any other visitors, I'm glad you're here. Hope you come back next week. Hope you've had fun. Okay? Second thing I want to say... Um, I don't want you guys to think that I'm up here because you know, I think I'm, I'm better than you or I think I'm more spiritual or more Christian or more saved or whatever. It's none of that. The reason, two reasons why I'm up here. First one, to glorify God. He has given me this gift of, you know, to communicate, to speak, to get in front of people, which is something that not many people like to do, as I've noticed. You know, how many guys actually like to get up in front of people and speak and stuff? We got a few. We got a few. The vast majority is hands down. Okay, so I do, I do want to glorify God in one thing. And the second thing is to help you guys. You know, I've noticed that, you know, Chad, don't get me wrong, Chad gets, has great messages. You know, I'm, I'm, everybody give it up for Chad. I like, don't forget the flush. Don't forget the flush. That was a good one, um, which is on the podcast. Pretty funny if you want to listen to it. Um, but I think sometimes it, it, I don't know if it means more, but, you know, it, when coming from somebody your age, you tend to listen more. I don't know. That's just, you know, not that I don't listen. To, I'm going to stop that before I get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to uh, the first. Actually, I'm speaking out of Psalm 73. Okay. And every time I've said that, everybody's like, what is Psalm 73? Because, you know, it's not like John 316. It's not like Psalms 91. It's not something everybody knows. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have read it if I wasn't reading through Psalms. But I think it's a great chapter. So if I can get my uh, first verse up there, first five verses, actually. Okay, I don't know if you guys can read this or not. I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, verse 1 through 5. Oh, shoot, I messed up. This is 6 through 10. But it's 1 through 5. It is 1 through 5. Okay, no doubt about it, God is good. Good to good people, good to the good hearted. But I nearly missed it. Missed seeing his goodness. I was looking the other way, looking up to the people at the top, envying the wicked who have it made, who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the world. Okay? First of all, I wanna, oh, first thing I want to say, God is good, right? Amen? God is good. All the time. God is good? All the time. All the time. Awesome. Okay. One thing I want to I kind of look at or, or talk about, though, a misconception about God is that he will bless anyone without, without them doing anything. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. Salvation, grace is free. Grace is given to you totally free. But blessings you have to work for. You have to live for God. You have to pray for them. Okay. And a lot of times what I hear, you know, people saying, you know, why did God let this happen? Or, you know, if God's so merciful, how has he let this happen? And it's not, it's not God, but it's us. We tie God's hands when we don't live for him. When we don't pray to him, we, when we don't ask him for help, he can't help us. Okay, and it's not like it is not that God doesn't want to understand God wants to help you so much He wants to bless every single one of us But when we don't live for him when we don't follow his commandments and we don't pray We don't ask for that. He can't give that to us because he gives us the gift of free will and we choose that Okay Second thing I want to look at in this. Uh, can you go back? I'm sorry Nate. Can you go back for that? the last line who have, uh, envying the wicked who have it made, who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the whole wide world. I don't know about you guys, but this is something that I've always kind of, you know, I don't want to say struggled with, but something that's kind of always frustrated me. You know, let's take Bill Gates, for example. Uh, where's German at? German. What religion is Bill Gates? He's an atheist. If you have any questions on what religion a celebrity is, ask this dude. He probably knows. Okay? So Bill Gates, ooh, sorry. So Bill Gates... We're good now. Okay. So Bill Gates is an atheist, but Bill Gates is also what the richest man in the world is worth like $60 billion, you know? And I'm kind of sitting there like, God, why am I not Bill Gates? 
You know, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I tithe. How come I can't have $60 billion? I don't know. I don't know if you guys do that, man. I was just thinking that the other day, you know. I mean, and, and you, can, you, know, you can replace anybody with that. Uh, German, give me another atheist that's a celebrity. Jack Nicholson, he's pretty, he's doing pretty well for himself, you know, he's not exactly hurting, okay, so just, you know, I don't know, I don't know if, you, how many people thought of that, please tell me I'm not the only one, okay, thank you, at least one, okay, you know, sorry, I'll just, I'll move on, that's just something I've always kind of dealt with, and, and the reason I, the reason I bring that up right now is, the, this chapter is, a, is that's, that's what it's about. This chapter is about, you know, talking about the, the writer's frustrations about how come I'm, you know, I'm the Christian, I'm the one living for God, and I don't have this stuff. Okay, so as we go through the chapter, he's going to kind of answer those questions. All right, let's go to verses 6 through 10. This one is actually 6 through 10, okay? It says, now, now the, writer, the writer is not David, actually. It's Asaph. Never heard of the guy, but apparently, you know, he made it into the Bible, so it must be pretty good. Okay? It says, uh, pretentious with arrogance, they wear the latest fashions in Bible. Man, I love the message translation. How many of you guys have a message Bible? It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's just very, anyway, I need to, shoo, off the rabbit trail. Okay. They wear the latest fashions in violence, pampered and overfed, decked out in silk bows of silliness. Say that five times fast. Not really. <laughs> they jeer, using words to kill. They bully their way with words. They're full of hot air, loud mouths, disturbing the peace. People actually listen to them. Can you believe it? Like thirsty puppies, they lap up their words. And like I said, message translation. It might get a little funny, but it is true. Okay, now he gets into how do the wicked people act. Okay, and he gives us two things right here, and I'm sure there's more, but two things. First thing, pretentious with arrogance. Now, you ever seen those people that, you know, that maybe they're rich, maybe they're not, but they kind of walk around like this? Their no nose in the air, you know, and they look, they look down their nose at you. Like, why don't you have as much money as I do? You know? And, and that's one way a wicked person acts. And I don't know, I don't know if Bill Gates does that. You know, I, don't, I don't personally know the guy. But you, you kind of think about this guy with so much money that he has, nothing, has no clue what to do with it. And he's just looking at you like, why aren't you that rich? You know? And as a Christian, that's kind of hard to deal with. You know, people say, well, if God's such a bless, well, blessing God, God blesses people, why not? You know? And, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's, we're going to get to that. The second thing, they bully their way with words. Okay? Who's, who's ever came in contact or dealt with a bully before? Him. Dude, you're like six foot something. How you, you got bullied? No, you bullied. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, sorry, raise your hands one more time. Who's ever in, came in contact, dealt with, with a bully before? Dealt with them? Okay, that, that works. Okay, see, there's a lot of people. The, the, main, the biggest thing, which I'm sure you guys have all heard this, you know, bullies are just cowards. They pick on people smaller than them, okay? And, and that's, that's what the writer is saying here. He's saying wicked people, you know, even though they, they're successful, quote-unquote, they, they bully people because they're insecure about themselves. You know, once you're a child of God, once you, get, once you accept Jesus Christ, you know who you are. You are a child of the king. You are a joint heir, joint heir with Christ, not heir, joint heir with Christ, okay? You are as an important person. Okay, and people that don't know God that are the, the wicked, quote unquote, I don't like to call them wicked. I mean, you know, they are. But anyway, you know, they they don't have a joy on the inside of them. They all they have is their money or their business or their acting career or whatever it is. And if that ever goes away, then they have they have nothing left. And, you know, maybe you can't relate to a business or money or an acting career. But how many of you, you don't have to raise your hands if you don't want to, have ever had a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or, you know, something that you've invested so much in, put so much of your life into, and then they just leave? They turn, they turn their back on you. They just completely, see, and there's a lot of people. And what I've, what I've learned and what, you know, from I learned the hard way, you can't put your joy in other people. You can't put your joy in money. You can't put your joy in your job. You can't put your joy in anything but God because God will never fail you. God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. God will always be there. Even if your entire family, all your friends, every, if you lose everything, God is still there. I, I don't know if you know who Job is in the Bible, but Job, this dude was rich. I mean, he, he, Bill Gates had nothing on Job. Job was doing pretty well for himself. And, you know, in the Bible it tells the story about how he lost everything. Lost his family, lost all his money, and he still believed in God. Why? Because God was still there. He put his joy in God, not in other people. And that's something that is hard, it's hard to do. It really is, you know, because, I mean, sometimes it's, it's nice to have somebody.